Come on, one more time. Sabbath is a happy day, happy day, happy day. Sabbath is a happy day. I love every Sabbath. Do you know, you grow up singing those songs, and there's just something very special. So, I, I don't know, I feel a, I feel a need to, to start with this moment of prayer, since we're going to be talking about that today. As this song is playing in your mind right now, I just want you to close your eyes, and I want you to say with me this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trust. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now if we said that prayer with our children, at least once a day, they would know that there is a Heavenly Father to whom we are responsible and that we are interested in all of our kids knowing Him. I had the privilege of, of, of being with some new parents. You're going to meet them next week. Please be here to greet Sean. Sean is the child of Brian and Ch Terry, I-E, T-E-R-R-I-E, -E, interesting spelling, uh, and they are going to dedicate, they are going to bring their child for dedication next week. So this, this wonderful feeling that you have that Sabbath is a happy day, it's going to happen again next week. We're going to have a dedication service here for Sean because that is what we do. Thank you, Santiago, for that. And? And? and Victoria, Amen. because your prayer is exactly right. Thank you for parents who make good choices. Because let's face it, those Sabbath school teachers that you just saw would not have anyone to talk to if you didn't drive them to Sabbath school. Just saying. Okay, so if the kids are going to come here and to have a, a, a Sabbath experience that includes some of the things that we offer at this church, like other churches, then you have to bring them. And so we thank you. We thank you for resisting that evil urge to sleep in. It is. It is. Uh, my Greek teacher was uh, an Englishman, and he was at Newbold College, and uh, it was Friday night, and he was tired, and uh, his, his inclination was to stay in bed. His roommate said something to him that night that changed his life. He said, Arthur, his name is Arthur Keogh, Arthur, if you stay in bed and you don't go to Vespers, you are going to miss a blessing. He got out of bed, he got ready, and he went to the Vespers. And he never missed again. So just understand that there is a pull on all of us. And if you don't believe that it happens to me on Sabbath morning, then I must tell you that there is a pull on me too to just say, ah, you know, hey, what, is it, what does it really matter? What does it really matter? But then when I get here and I sit in a Sabbath school class next to Barry and, 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 and you have Virginia teaching who's been preparing all week and you have all this the stuff that comes in, you are blessed because there are people who have been connected to God and they have brought that connection here to share. And as we each have our own connection, we share with each other and, as the text says, we encourage one another in the Lord. That's why Paul says, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. So my new friend, Felipe, thank you for bringing his entire family, taking up an entire row, saying, we are going to church. Disney tomorrow, church today. Disney tomorrow, church today. Thank you. Thank you for honoring the God of creation 
and, uh, and may you have a, a, fantastic, a fantastic weekend. Here's the first thing and maybe the only thing you will remember about what I'm going to say. Prayer changes us. Prayer changes us. We change things. So if you, if you just let that sink into your mind for a moment, you may realize that this is part of the series that we've been doing. It's number five of the tools that God uses to shape our lives. Number five, prayer. Prayer changes us. We pray often. I mean, the prayer chain is very active in this church, and, and there are many other people who who, who come along and, and, and who ask you to pray because they believe somehow that by your praying that God is going to do something. But I want us to focus on the fact that God uh, is interested in us praying, and he's interested in having this connection with us that we call prayer because he knows that prayer changes us. Then in connection with him, we change things. Philippians chapter 4 and verses 6 and 7 are very important to both my wife and I. Uh, she particularly loves this particular song, uh, this particular verse. It goes, uh, do not be anxious. Now, I don't know about you, but when you see a lot of beautiful children up here, thank you Ruth for organizing and and, 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 and just getting them to do all those wonderful actions. When you see the kids up here in the midst of this chaotic world, does that not pull on your heart to say, these kids know about the God of creation and they're singing praises to him. In this moment, does that not bring joy to your heart? Do not, Paul says to his Philippian church, do not be anxious about anything. Okay, not a, not a thing. In other words, this, this business of being anxious, of being worried, this business of, uh, of, of thinking that you, that you can take care of yourself and that you can fix things. Don't. Do not, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, he's, he's, he's doing a 180 here, okay, watch him, watch, watch Paul carefully, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My friends. If there was ever to be any instruction about the transfer from one operating system in this world to another, this is Paul's treatise on that. He is saying, in the world today, with what's going on, you are, if you take care of it the way that the world takes care of it, you are going to be anxious. You're going to be worried. Because, as we discussed, see how this all works out, Virginia? As we discussed in Sabbath school class today, if you think that you can do it, then you better ask yourself the next question. What if I fail? If I fail, I have myself to blame because I did what I thought was best. There's a lot of people who do a lot of bad things to themselves when they fail. They're very critical of other people who fail, but oh my goodness, when they fail, it's like they've let themselves down and that's the ultimate treachery. Some people don't ever recover from that. So Paul's advice is, don't be anxious about anything. In other words, don't operate on that system that has worry at the core. Don't be afraid. You've heard me say many times in this, in this congregation, there are two operating systems, fear and love. 
Fear says, you've got to worry about this. This is, this is your stuff to worry about because this is you. And, and it piles on and it piles on and it piles on. And, and, and you just get wor- more and more anxious and worried. And, and what does that do? It, it drives up your blood pressure. Uh, it, it, it causes cancer. It causes your body not to function properly. And one, two, three, you're sick and dying. The Bible tells us there is an enemy, and a lion, this time a vicious lion who is seeking to devour each and every one of us. His methodology is self-destruction. Paul says there's an antidote, my friends. There is an antidote. Don't, Don't operate on the system of fear, but by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Joy, like we feel this morning, seeing these wonderful children, present your requests to God, and, in, and, and the peace of God, which, my friends, is, is this other system. It's this other goal in life. Having the peace of God that, he says, in the very next breath, in, in the... Uh, uh, not quotation marks, but commas. He's adding this with thanksgiving, present your, and the peace of God, which is not understandable by human intellect. How's that? Okay, I, I know we're educated people here, and, and, and we think we know a thing or two, but, but guess what? The peace that God brings in this chaotic world when we operate on his system of love, that peace, that that healing that comes mentally, physically, emotionally is something that just cannot be understood by any of our sciences, any of our knowledge bases. Because really what we're looking at is the miracle of the transformation of our mind and our bodies by the Spirit of God. And that is not something that can be explained by humanistic, self-driven thought. Prayer changes us. Prayer changes me. Prayer changes me and then through communication with me and my cooperation by choice, God never rides over top of our choice, prayer is the way in which God communicates what he would like me to be so that then he can place me where he wants me to be with the people that he wants me to be with. Because you see, as we, again, as we said in, 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 in uh, Sabbath school today, we We are here because we get to be in connection with God and by being in connection with God then we have the opportunity to be in connection with other human beings whomever God directs us to be in in, in contact with and then they too can see that there is a difference between fear and love and as a result they can choose love. They can choose to operate in the same system and that they too can experience the peace of God. As I think about these things, I, I, I often like to think, what is the whole, what is the whole goal? What is, what is the whole meaning of doing this particular thing? What is God trying to shape me for? And it's this. It's his peace. It's the peace that he gives us in the midst of the chaos of the valley. Psalm 23 Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, you've heard me say this. And no, the Santa Clarita Valley is not the only valley of the shadow of death. Okay? The valley is this whole, this whole world in which we live. We can walk through the valley knowing that we have a leader whom we have personally chosen to follow. Thank you, Milton and Denise, for preparing a lot of our kids for baptism, which is the thing that we do to show that we have made a decision already. If you've decided to follow Jesus and you haven't been baptized, please talk to me. 
One should follow the other, just like engagement is followed by a wedding. Okay? Thank you for preparing our kids. We have kids. I am, I am now working on the baptistry with others to make sure that it's ready so that we can fill it up and that we can show that there are kids in this church who have already said yes to Jesus. And that we go through the, the, the ritual. It's just a ritual. It's a ritual of baptism to show that they have accepted the good news about Jesus and the fact that he has saved them. That they have passed over from, from depending on themselves to depending on Jesus as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. They have decided that Jesus is their shepherd. Second thing I want you to think about today about prayer is Prayer is our work. Now there are some, and I, I, I don't know, you may be one of them. There are some that believe that there is a work to finish. And then Jesus will come. Be aware that this pastor believes that Jesus has his work, and we've just talked about that, and that is he is at work in my life and he as, is at work in my life to invite me to be with him in doing his work. Emphasis on his. What does the text say? I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men to whom? You? No, to me, Jesus says. All the pronouns in that are pointing to Jesus. Jesus says, my work is to draw people. And, and, and in essence, what we are saying when we say yes to Jesus is, I'd, I'd like to be on, on target with you. I'd like to be on your team. That's, that's all we're saying. I want to be on your team. And he says, okay, let's be in communication with each other. And that's what prayer is, is this communication. Prayer is our work if you want to think of it that way. So uh, a number of us, of course, are, we, we have a prayer chain. We have people who are alerted when somebody would like to have uh, prayer made. But I'll tell you what, each and every one of us has a family. We have extended family. We have a circle of friends. We have a circle of work associates. And you know, you, each, each and every one of you could mention probably 50 people and I'm not exaggerating, 50 people that you have had either some or a lot of connection to. What if you had to think, my work, the work that the Holy Spirit is going to help me with, is to, to think about these individuals and to pray for these individuals for their salvation, for their uh, uh, ability to be a part of the kingdom of God now, and in the future. It's an interesting thought to, to realize that prayer is not just for me. Uh, many, many have said this, it bears saying again. Prayer is not you going to the great vending machine in the sky and pushing the button and saying, please help me to get over the flu. Dear Jesus, I've got the flu. Please help me to get it like he's going to be dispensing the NyQuil. This is, this is not the idea that we're talking about here. Yes, he wants to know about your needs. Didn't, isn't that what Paul says? Presenting your petitions, presenting your needs, presenting the needs of those, but with thanksgiving, knowing that he already knows. And he already has a way of, of, of giving you the answer. Maybe it is that we haven't been paying attention enough to know that he has already sent the answer. Maybe you are slowed down with the flu because he didn't want you to go to work because there was something going to happen on the way to work that he is saving you from. Interesting thought. God would actually let me get sick so that he could save my life. But he, if he is the one that is directing your life, if he is the shepherd that is leading you as one of the sheep in his pasture, as you follow him, he leads you beside still waters. He leads you to green pasture. He leads you knowing that what he does for you 
is the best. Now, you in return, communicating with him, praying, being in contact, you therefore know, we therefore know, that by being in contact with him, we are doing the work that he wants us to do. I believe that, that my friend, that my friend is the work that we need to be most engaged in as he tells us, as he brings to mind individuals, please don't let the sun go down before you contact that individual. You don't know why he brought that individual to your mind. But this is the habit that my wife and I have been getting into. In the mornings, we are praying for people and, and, and we are saying, God, uh, uh, these are the people we're praying for, but if there are any others that you would like us to... And suddenly there will be people who we haven't thought of for 20 years that will come across. And guess what? There's Facebook now. There's, there's, there's all kinds of ways that we can get in touch with people. And all it takes is just taking that moment and calling that person up or texting that person and saying, you know what? Today God told me to pray for you. I don't know what's going on in your life. We haven't talked in years. But today God told me to pray for you. How about that? How about that being the work that God gives us as we upbuild, as we be together as a church, as we walk to the kingdom of heaven? This is, to me, the idea of praying continually. I see so many people these days walking around with newfangled uh, 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 Bluetooth pieces in their ear. I mean, I don't even have to tell you. You know what that's like because you are them. Okay? <laughs> I have a friend, Steve, and maybe he's watching me today. I don't know. But Steve always has, you know, his, his earbuds in. Steve is, is always available. You can call Steve because he's got his earbuds in. He can talk to you anytime. And, and if he's got another call coming, he'll, he'll put you on hold. He knows how to use that phone so well, I'm envious. But he's, he's got this constant communication with the people that he needs to be in touch with. I would put forward to you today that the God of heaven would like the same opportunity with each one of us. He would like us to accept the Holy Spirit in our minds so that when we're going through and we're making decision after decision where when we find ourselves in situation after situation, we have the ability then to just say, God, what do you want me to do? And boom, the answer comes because he is the leader. He is the one who is leading. He has promised that if we do this, that we don't have to worry and that we will be in peace. Now, I don't know if some of the political moves that are being made today will bring peace in various parts of the world where there is no peace. But I can promise you this, if you accept the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your life today, that the healing back together, which is the definition of peace, the healing back together of you and your Heavenly Father will progress. And that He will shape you into that instrument that he can then place by, by dint of the fact that you have said yes to him and that you are communicating to him and that you are paying attention, he can then place you into various situations in this world where, my friends, the effect will be that someone's life will be changed. Not because of you, but because you were listening and you were then doing what he asked you to do. Uh, physicists talk about the, the whole butterfly effect, you know. A butterfly flaps its wings in the Amazon jungle and a tsunami happens somewhere else in the world. How do we, how do we know the, the effect? My friends, we don't. Sometimes we are blessed. We are blessed to know. Uh, my wife chose in one of our first districts, in our first district after seminary in Buena Vista, Virginia, she chose to say yes to the lovely lady, Mrs. Lemon, who wanted to know, this is so traditional, do you, do you play the piano? My wife thought this was a joke before we got to that church, 
But within 15 minutes of being in that church, Mrs. Lemon asked her, do you play the piano? You know, as a pastor's wife, you're supposed to, well, some people believe you're supposed to play the piano. <laughs> she, thought, she thought this was a joke. Uh, but no, it was not a joke to Mrs. Lemon. And yes, Chris uh, plays the piano. And so she said, I will be your associate. But she then said, are you going to be working in kindergarten? You know, we're a young couple. They're expecting we're going to start a family and then we'll be interested in kindergarten, you know, the kid thing. And, and my wife is just, was just not built that way. Isn't, still. So she, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, decided there was a piece missing in what we were offering in that church, and she started a young adult class. As a result of starting that young adult class, she met a couple there that were dating. He was going to a university nearby. She was going elsewhere, and, and on a, some occasions they would be together on, on the weekends, and they would be there. Ultimately, they got married, and we've stayed in touch with them over the years. And I want you to know that... We have been blessed by their friendship, first of all, and also blessed by knowing that way back then, and this is way back then, Chris's decision to listen to the Holy Spirit and to start a young adult class was an aid. We don't know that it was, we cannot say that it was everything. But it aided this young couple in their collegiate experience to have that kind of connection with God and a godly congregation and a godly pastor's wife who decided she was going to listen to the Spirit, they then have had a life of ministry. Now, he's a lawyer, she has been a homemaker, but they have been active in the lives of countless young people who have been on the, on the edge. And, 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 and it's not been an easy ministry life for them. It really hasn't. And they have called us up several times to ask us to pray for individuals who they are caring for, to, to, to ask God to intervene in their lives. It is a privilege to live long enough to actually see the results of something that you did years and years ago. Some of you who are older could tell those very self-same stories. Maybe you don't have to be older. Maybe you can say something I did when I was 10 is now bearing fruit when I'm 20. But the fact is, God, God knows the end. He knows the ripple effect of that interaction so that when He calls upon you and you say yes and you're in connection with Him, you don't know often the end of where that ripple effect will go from what you do. So I'm encouraging you, encourage one another, tell stories like this, listen, listen to the prayers, listen to the songs of the children. Be here to be an influence as a, as a grandma, as a grandpa, as an uncle and auntie in spiritual life. Be here because there's an up and coming group of individuals, young individuals whose minds are needing to be shaped by God. And when they see you as a praying individual, they too will choose to be praying individuals. May God bless us as we move forward together as a church family. Amen.